Thinger, Denver Post. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Um, two years ago, sorry, I got muted. Uh, two years ago, when, when you guys faced the, the Trailblazers, you obviously were on the sidelines um, watching and taking in that series. What do you remember about that? What, what do you remember about the intensity of, of that seven game series? And, and I remember, obviously, you traveled to Portland as well and, and felt that environment too. I mean, yeah, that was them. Um, I think we played them first. And I just remember, honestly, what I remember most is just how, how good CJ McCollum was. I know everybody talks about Damian Lillard, but CJ is another player that they have that can be very good. So it was a great series. Um, and I'm excited to be a part of it this year. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Mike, looking back on um, your playoff debut last year, just, just how much more ready do you feel like for, for that environment where, where defenses are more focused on you when people game plan more? How much more ready do you feel for that this year, your second time around the playoffs? I definitely feel more ready, feel more uh, ready to know what I should expect. And, you know, I haven't played Portland before, but just being a part of the playoffs, you kind of realize there's a whole other level of basketball that goes to, so I'm prepared for it, and I'm, I'm excited for it. Katie Wingy, Altitude. Hey, Mike. Calvin Booth was on the radio this morning, and he said that he hopes that Jamal Murray is with you guys for the playoffs. And I'm just curious, like, what would it mean for you personally and for this team to have Jamal in the locker room, kind of serving as a coach, serving as a support guy for you on the bench? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty pretty cool if Jamal uh, showed his face, but obviously we want him to be getting the best treatment that he can get. So if that's here, if that's where he's at right now, uh, we totally understand, but it'd definitely be a welcome sight to have him around. Chris Dempsey, Altitude. Hey, Michael, uh, along those the, the, the lines of, of your experience level, but just how did things change for you in terms of how defenses were guarding you once Jamal went down. Can you just kind of walk us through how that evolved and, and, and how you had to adjust to that? I mean, you know, a lot of my stuff with Jamal came weak side. You know, if, if, if Joker him got in trouble, I was gonna, it was getting swung my way. I get wide open threes, uh, wide open, you know, closeouts. I could drive the closeouts. Um, and the game was just a lot more open. Um, when you're a vocal point of a team scouting report, it's just they're more paying attention to you. So it's like that you got to really use your head to, to, to get shots. You know, you're going to have to shoot tougher shots. Um, and it's just, it's definitely been a difference. You know, I was getting more rebounds when Jamal was playing because partly because I was using some of that energy to crash the offensive glass, but a lot of times I'd already be in the corner just chilling. So when a shot went up from Jamal or Joker or whoever, I had, a lot of uh, time to crash. Now I'm playing a lot above the break. So when shots go up, it's harder to crash from the perimeter, you know, than it is from the corner. That's another thing that's a little different, but you know, it's, it's a welcome sight um, just to adjust my game, to play with whoever I'm out there on the floor with. Um, I gotta be versatile in that way, so. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Michael, uh, I'm going to take you back to Portland a couple years ago. You, you were on the bench, you were enthusiastic, and then Evan Turner said that you got him pretty upset, him and the Blazers pretty upset. What the hell did you do, and how much are you looking forward to actually playing against the Blazers in a playoff series? What I, what happened, what I do? What happened? I forget. Oh, Evan Turner and them, they thought I did this or something? Yeah, yeah, that's what they thought. That's exactly what they thought. Oh, yeah. I think I, I think what happened was we hit a three, and I was going like this. And then I think that was just my last finger down, and it looked like I was, um, you know, flipping them off. But And I think Damian Lillard, like, posted it on his Instagram. And I was just – I was kind of surprised because I ain't going to lie, it did look like that, but I wasn't even trying to do that. But it is what it is, you know. It's in the past, so I'm excited to play this series. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Michael, I, I, you said earlier this season that you know you, you got sick of hearing you, that you didn't play any defense or, or sick of having your defense criticized. And I'm sure some of that stemmed from last year's playoffs. Is there any motivation on your behalf to kind of you know, show the national audience how, how far you've come on that end? 
Uh, no doubt, you know, especially in the playoffs, you're not going to win without playing defense. And I know I'm capable of locking in and, and giving a lot of energy and uh, making a difference on that side of the basketball. So um, definitely looking forward to that. Probably um, more than, you know, more than the offensive stuff. That'll come defensive where I'm, I, I'm excited for individually. Katie Wingy, Altitude. Mike, you've played on some pretty big stages, obviously, and last year's playoffs in the bubble, that was one thing. But now you're having an opportunity to get more of a feel for what the real NBA playoffs are like, playing in front of some fans at the very least, traveling to opposing arenas. What are your expectations for that, and are you excited? Definitely excited. You know, at the end of the day, it's still basketball. It's just going to be a lot more, um, you know, guys are going to be a lot more locked in. It's going to be a lot more intense, but it's still basketball. Um, so you got to up your intensity and match the intensity and, and, you know, exceed the intensity of your opponent, but it's, it's still basketball and it's been something I've been doing my whole life. So I'm looking forward to it, playing on the, on the biggest stage you can possibly play on. Um, and you know, every game, every possession matters. So I can't wait. Christos Saltas. Hey, Michael, hope you are doing well. I would like to ask you, how beneficial for you was the last uh, season experience in playoff in the bubble? And how important is to set the tone from the game one and approach it as one of the, as the most important game of the series? I mean, you know, nothing can, can come close to playoff experience because, you know, you just really, you see firsthand, like, from game to game, you're playing the same team over and over again. And the adjustments teams make, the adjustments you have to make as a team, you have to make as a player. But every game is so different and it's just so much more intense. So, I mean, last year definitely prepared me more for this year. Um, it was my first playoffs. We made a Western Conference Finals run. Um, this year, obviously my role is a little bit different, but I got to be locked in. And game one, it's definitely the, you know, setting the stage for the series. And I'm looking forward to Saturday. I think we play Saturday. All right, Mike, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Mike, how do you handle the pressure of being the number two option and, and obviously having more responsibility? How do you navigate that pressure going onto this stage? I mean, I don't really view it as number two option, number three, number four. Like, we're a team. There's going to be, there's going to be games when one person's hot. There's going to be games when another person's hot. There's going to be games when one person shooting more than the other. I don't really view it like that, but I do know that I have more responsibility on my shoulders. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm welcoming it. Like, I'm embracing it. It's where I wanted to be, you know, progressing, taking a jump. I want to take a jump every year. You know, I'm never going to be content. So I'm embracing it, and I'm excited to see um, what teams throw at me and uh, how I'm going to overcome those situations. All right, that'll do it. Thanks, Mike.